Hi everyone, this is Laura from Green & Co. Today I am going to go through the um, instructions on how to do your epoxy uh, poured cutting board. Um, so in your kit you will have, actually not in your kit, in your box you will have your um, cutting board base. You will have, you will need to find your golden pine stain um, and then you will have your box with all of your pieces um, for the pour in there. So to get started, we are going to stain this board. We were supposed to have manufactured cutting boards that were already pre-finished, but that is a whole nother story. So we were just going to do this part now. So we're gonna stain. Uh, we're going to stain the back and the front and the sides. We're going to let that dry and then we will continue on with the rest of it. So when I'm staining, I like to stain the back first. Um, so that way when I'm doing my edges after, any uh, extra heaviness can be on the back rather than on the front side. So if you've never stained anything, uh, with us before we use a water-based stain and when you're staining you want to stain in the direction of the grain now you're going to notice that the grain is going a little bit off uh, on an angle uh, which is fine um, so you just take your brush your foam brush give it a good dip in the stain and then I like to turn it on its side so I can wipe it on instead of just letting the brush go like this. So this allows for a little bit more um, consistency and it speeds up the process. So I'm gonna go to the top here. I'm not gonna fill in that hole yet. I'm just gonna leave it. So you're going to do one side first and then you're going to want to wipe it to blend it. If you just let it dry as is, then the spots that are a little heavier uh, will dry that way. And this also helps it dry faster because you're wiping away any extra moisture. So now, I've got a little bit on the edges here, so I'm just going to wipe that off right now. I'm going to flip it over, do the same thing again. So just watch when your hand, your gloves get uh, some stain on them. So when you are handling it, especially now that the back is stained, uh, you might just want to check after, make sure you didn't leave any um, stain prints on the back. Not that you will see it, but okay. So the front is done. wipe that side off and then I'm going to come in here and I'm not really going to put on any extra stain I'm just gonna gently press what I have in here I might have to press a little harder and I'm just gonna wipe as I go now as I'm wiping I'm kind of overlapping on the back side so it kind of helps wipe away anything extra that might go on the back. When I do get some stain on my brush, I'm just dipping very lightly. I don't want a whole bunch um, dripping on either side. And I'm just kind of blend that just in case it does overlap. I'm going to finish up the handle. Sorry guys if this is a little harder to see. This is a bigger project so sometimes it doesn't show very well on my end. So. Okay, 
So I'm gonna try and just take my brush and I'm just gonna go run it on the inside and then just wipe it off and blend it. So that should be enough to do that anyways. And some of your pouring medium will be flowing into there anyways. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna let that dry. We're gonna give it a sand after and then uh, we will prep it for um, our epoxy pour, which I think you guys will enjoy. I really liked doing it. So, um, so yeah, I will be back in a while. All right, see you guys. Okay guys, I'm back and uh, ready to go into the next part. So right now my board is stained and it's dry. It's very rough because of the stain has raised the grain. So now we need to give that a uh, sand with your 400 grit sandpaper till it's nice and smooth. those edges. Okay, and then turn it around and do the back. Now, deciding which is your front and back, they pretty much look exactly the same. And um, however, when these are cut, there is a good chance, hold on guys, that there sometimes is a blemish or something. And so make sure that is in the back, obviously. And then, uh, so you have a nicer looking front. Now, when it comes to doing a resin pour, the reason we wanted the real cutting boards is that they have a nice um, rounded edge. Now, with these ones, because these are machine cut, the edges are, they're slightly cur like sanded round, but they're not like a cutting board round. So when we do this uh, resin pour, we're pretty much just going to take it up to the edge um and we're not going to cover the sides um let me see if i've got my sample hold on this is just done out of a quarter sheet we are a quarter inch and this is a half inch so as you can see on this one we're just going to pour to the edge and not worry about um going to uh, on the sides okay so but that still means we need to tape off the back because we don't want uh, anything even just by handling it anything getting on the back so what you're going to do now is you're gonna take some tape and you're gonna go all the way around now it's really hard to go around on a curve so what I suggest is just kind of slightly um, go over the edge and then take an exacto knife and then go around flip it over and cut it so it's round just like the board. Um, the reason why you don't want to leave it with an edge like this is that if the resin does happen to drip over, that it doesn't puddle on the edge there and uh, leave it um, and not be able to, it won't come off. So it's definitely better to just take your knife after and cut it. These sides here are a little bit easier to do. You can just leave that there. We will cut a hole in the tape um, for the handle because we don't want it to puddle in the middle. So we'll cut that out after. So right now I'm just going to leave you guys. I'm going to finish taping up my board and I will come back once it's all done and I'll show you exactly what it looks like and then we will go on to the next part. All right. Um, I'll just leave the camera running and you guys can just watch me on fast motion okay okay back over here now as you can see i have a little bit of a opening on the handle that I did not tape. So I'm just gonna get that really close 
and trim off if you need to. Now take your finger and really seal those edges. You do not want the resin to come underneath there. Now leaving the back exposed like this still isn't um, a good idea. So let me go grab my scissors. Okay, I'm just taking some paper. Um, wax paper or parchment or anything like that does not work very well. So I'm just going to fold in like this. We're going to overlap the tape again. So we don't want any stuff to leak underneath. So just do what you gotta do to cover the back. I just would suggest not a parchment or a wax paper just because your tape does not stick very well to that. And uh, you're gonna want something that's going to um, not come loose um, after. So just uh, tape off again. If you get the tape going over the edge, just trim it off, but uh, just go around and uh, tape this and then I will go on to the next step. Once again, I'll just leave the camera running and you can just watch what I'm doing and then I'll be right back. So you can use tape for the whole back if you wish to. I just figured this was a easier way to use just a little less tape, but as you can see, it does take up quite a bit, but you don't want to get any resin on your board where, unless where you want it to be, because once it's on there, it's not coming off. Now, baby wipes are a really good thing to have, which I left mine at home. So, um, rubbing alcohol and a piece of paper towel is another good um, thing to have as well for wiping the edges if it does spill as it's being poured. So, that's fine. Which I'm going to go grab mine. Okay, so now that that is done, now you're gonna to wanna to raise this off the table. So if you start pouring flat on a surface and you get puddling, it's obviously gonna puddle around your board. So I'm just using wooden blocks. You could use some plastic you know, drink cups or anything like that. You just wanna get it raised up so you have um, a clear area and it's not sitting on there. Um, you will want to put some parchment paper underneath or something to protect the surface that you are working on um, because um, once it does start to drip, it does get a little messy. So as in our subscription box in May, you guys were working with resin and hardener. We are doing the exact same thing for mixing. Um, so you guys should have got new cups in your box so you can Grab that. I'm just gonna give mine a little wipe out here. It's got a little bit of dry stuff. So as you remember, when you are done with mixing your cups, these ones you can throw away. If you want to keep these bigger white ones, you will need to make sure that you wipe it out really well first, and then you can um, wipe it down with some soap and water. You just don't want any of this resin to go down the sink at all because that would be a nightmare. All right, there we go. Whoops. Okay, that should be good enough. 
Okay, so you are going to have one ounce of hardener, one ounce of resin. So you're going to need to accurately measure 30 of the hardener first. Eye level, make sure get it as accurate as possible. Then when that one's done, you're gonna come in with 30 mils of the resin and then that will bring it up to 60 mils as accurate as possible. If you are a little out either direction, um, that can affect the, um, the outcome in how this hardens or if it does harden or not. So I'm just going to get down to eye level and do this. I'm not sure if it's gonna show on the camera, so I'm just going to let it run and if it's in there, it's in there. If not, I will. I will just edit it out. All right. Another thing I should mention is that you should have your gloves on for this. This is not something you want to get on your hands. So gently pour. You can have one of your sticks close in case you need to kind of stop it from pouring. Gradually get slower and slower as you hit that 30 mil mark. There we go. Now, this is why I like the baby wipes because then I could come in and wipe my edge of my container, but we're just going to use my rubbing alcohol and put your lid on that. Okay, so that was the hardener first. Double check it again. So make sure you're in some good light so you can really see that line. Okay, next one is the resin. Now this stuff is a bit thicker if you do recall using this, so it's not as easy to stop. So just slowly approach the 60 and definitely slow down way sooner than you did with the hardener. Okay, so there we go. I've done both. Wiped off my containers here. And put your lids on. And now you're gonna start mixing this for five minutes. Now I know with the, um, the coasters, we really wanted to be careful with the bubbles. Um, if you do this, and there's lots of bubbles, don't worry. We're working with a thinner um, layer of this, and so using um, a lighter or a heat gun or something will help get those bubbles out. So don't panic quite so much. Uh, I'm gonna pause you guys so I can mix this and use the timer on my phone, and then I will come back when I'm ready to start mixing the colors. All right, see you soon. Okay, I got my timer going, so I thought I'd get back on here so I can talk while I'm mixing this. So if you never uh, did work with the resin mixture, you're going to, You'll notice when you're stirring the two together that the um, epoxy is a bit heavier and so it tends to show thin wispy um, marks in, in the hardener, like as you're mixing it. So once this starts to um, mix together, um, it will start to become a bit more clear, but you need to mix it for um, five minutes and um, really get those sides scraped and use get the stick on the bottom so you can get all of that mixed together. I'm just going to keep stirring here. Yes, I have lots of bubbles. I noticed when we mix the paint in, it takes some of the, well, it hides some of the bubbles, so you won't quite see it as easily as it is when it's clear. So, um, but when we pour it on our board, um, it definitely has a chance to escape 
easier than it does when it's in a thicker um, base like our like the coaster so don't um, worry about it quite as much now when it comes to doing the board um, you can do it one of two ways I'm just going to um, pour it on um, and without marking like taping off some people will tape off across so they have a nice straight line so they're working within that area me I'm going to be a little bit more free form and just pour where I want it and um, and so forth um, the reason we really wanted to get the real cutting boards is that so you could you know use it as a server um, you could put cups and stuff like that and drinks and I mean you could still you know place a piece of parchment paper and put food on top of it there but um, you or you can use this as decoration it's just not a hundred percent food safe for you to directly put food right on the board um, there is um, to make it totally food safe you want a you know a real cutting board and the epoxy resin that we're using you would want it to be a food safe brand so because we knew that we were doing the cutting boards anymore we're just using the same um, base that we did with the coasters um, but you can get mediums that are food safe and then you would just mix them with mica pigments uh, instead of uh, paint so that way you can um, have a totally food safe serving board which are great for gift ideas and such um, so we're just letting you know that in case you find that you want to do something like that for you know gift ideas and such Oops. Okay, I'm sure my five minutes is almost up so once the timer goes off I'm gonna stop my phone again and then I will come back um, and we'll set up for the next part So it might look clear, but definitely the bubbles are making it, um, you know, seem like it's um, a little bit more cloudier, but it's definitely, it's definitely. Okay, so my timer says it is done. Okay, so now you are going to want to set up some cups, get your gloves back on and grab your paint. So I'm working with the colors that we had in our subscription box. So um, if you choose to change these, you do not need a lot of paint. It really is just a dip into the paint. So I am just gonna get my paint ready. Now Seaside is my darker color and that's what we're gonna use for um, the first part. So it does really need to be one of the more uh, most colors that with my heirloom so I did the darker and then blended the heirloom into there so I'm going to pour so it has a good amount probably maybe like three quarters of that cup um, just kind of divvy it up the best you can Heirloom, I'm probably gonna do, mm, I don't know, probably close to the same, but then the clear I'm going to leave in this cup. I'm going to pour my white into the other cup. And clear, I'm really just doing one line, so that really is all I need. Okay, so for my paint, take your paint containers, here, there's no exact amount. I'm just kind of dipping my um, stick in there. And then I'm just going to put it into there. Do the same thing with my other color. Just grab a little paint and stick it in there. Same with my white. Okay. There we 
go. Okay, and then a little white. I have less of it, so I don't necessarily need quite as much. There we go. Okay, so now what you're going to do is you're going to mix so the color is well blended. So you can see that it doesn't take much to tint that medium. Okay. Okay, so there's one. Okay, and then my white. Okay, so you're gonna use you're going to have your straw, you're going to have your colors, and we're going to get started. So I'm going to position this so you really can see. Hopefully I can. Okay, so if you are wanting to have a straight line across and pour into that, then you're going to want to tape off. Um, I prefer it to just be as is. So for this particular one, I started with my dark uh, first. You're not just going to uh, pour it all on. You want to just gently... Pour only what you kind of need and move it around. So I'm just going to start on my handle and I'm just going to move it around. And it will self-level itself. So you definitely want to make sure that you're on an area that is, um, you know, level. If it has a little bit of a lean on it, you'll notice that your, um, your epoxy resin mixture might start, you know, flowing more that way um, as it tends to settle. Okay, so, so because these edges aren't round, I'm just going to take this stuff right up to the edge. We'll get enough that it can, it usually will um, move to the edge. It won't go over unless you really force it. So that's why you don't want too much. And we can always wipe that away at first when it's still, um, still fairly fresh. But you want to bring it as close as you can and it will level out. This is the part where you kind of have to be the most pickiest. So just patient near this part okay and we can come back and do some more now all right so now I'm gonna do a bit of the blue in here don't have to use it all so just start out small kind of push it to where you want you're kind of creating like you know like a beach like where the water and the and the waves and stuff like that that's kind of what this will look like so that's why you want to start with the darker because it's kind of like the you know the deeper the water it looks all those different layers okay so I'm just gonna stop there Just gonna give it a little bit of a tilt this way because I want to get it right to the edge. But hold on, I want to go a little further over here. Okay, so now have a paper towel or some baby wipes here in case you get some on your gloves. Okay, next you're gonna go with the lighter color. So. I am just going to gently pour right where I left off. Okay, and I'm just going to gently pour. It would be good to watch where your stick is so you're not just pouring it wherever. So 
I might just wipe some of that off for now. Okay, so this is where your straw comes into play because you can use it to start blending. Um, you can either push it with the stick, I like to blow it. So And as you do this, this is where it might start to push it over the edge and we can wipe that away after. Okay. So I'm just gonna bring a little bit more blue into here. And there's no perfect way to do this. You just you know, it really will create its own unique look. Now I'm going to put a little bit of the clear, which is kind of going to show um, the wood underneath, which is really cool. And you really want to just try and carefully get it at the edge of the blue. Okay. And then next comes the white. Now when you blow it, it looks like, you know, the when the waves crash into you know, they crash, they have that white look to them. So this, you're going to very carefully pour on the edge and stop. Okay, so now you can, once again, use your straw and blow. So as you do that, you can see like you bring in, in the waves and stuff like that. So you can keep building layers. Um, I might add a little bit more blue in here, just very slightly, just to give it a little bit more depth, right? That's why you don't want to use it all at once in case you decide that you want to blend a little bit into here and you can keep going again so as you do that that's where it's starting to go over the edge so that's okay I'm going to show you how to whip it And I might even put a little bit of the lighter into the handle. And blow again. All right, what else do I want to do? So I might do a little bit of white. I might actually do an inner layer of white just so it looks like a wave crashing on the inside there. Okay. And then just blow again. So yeah, you just keep building and building until you are happy with, you know, your results. And as you're doing that, you're going to want to wipe your edges. Now, I wish I had brought my diaper wipes, but that's fine. Okay, so as I'm going over, just gently wipe the edge. It will definitely help things when we go to remove the tape. Now, when we remove the tape and any resin gets on that side, it will stick it um, to the board and not want to come off. So there's a couple ways to do this. Um, you can either let your board sit for, you know, four to six hours till it starts to set up. And I guess that all depends too on um, your environment and how fast that's doing that. And you can gently pull the tape off before it has a chance to really harden. Um, that's one way. Or if you have 
um, a heat gun. Once this is totally dry, you can come in and heat up the tape a little bit and it will help it to peel right off from any resin that it is stuck to. Now, my corners here are what are giving me an issue, so I might come in there with a Q-tip and some. Okay, but I'm gonna keep playing with mine because, well, I had lots of stuff left and I'm going to probably bring it down a little bit more, but just watch those corners and just clean off any of the stuff as it's still fresh because it definitely makes it easier. So, all right, so yeah, I probably have about a little bit more of the seaside that I'm gonna play with. And each time you start blowing with the straw, it obviously will send it over the edge. So you can do some of that. Probably most of your wiping when you're done, but Anyways, just keep playing. I am going to, you know what? I'm just gonna keep adding some more. So the white was supposed to be my last edge, but you know what? I am just gonna keep playing and layering. So I've got a little bit more of this one. And I do have some more clear, so I am going to actually, I'm gonna blow first. I just like how it kind of creates this free form look. So I'm going to put my clear in. here and I am going to put some more white so you can see that a little bit this stuff really goes a long way okay and I'm just gonna keep So yep, just keep playing with it. And sometimes you just have to learn when to, you know, walk away. <laughs> but uh, right now I'm pretty happy with it. I'm just gonna add a little bit more blue in here. And then I will start getting this cleaned up here. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave it, and uh, if you don't wanna do any cleanup, then just gather those little cups and throw them in the garbage. Um, if you want to use those cups again, you know, if this is something you like to do and you know you don't wanna go buy any more, then yeah, you can just wipe them out and reuse them. But as you can see, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but you can see some puddling and some drips there, so. That's what's going on to the table. So, that's why you wanna make sure that you are keeping something underneath so that way it will dry properly. So I did a little splatter here, so I'm just gonna wipe it away. And then I'm gonna work on cleaning up my edges. So. That's it for now. I will come back later when this is um, going on to the next step. But for now, just get this poured, wipe all your edges. And you may have to keep coming back throughout your, as it's starting to dry. And because it'll just keep leveling itself out and still keep going along the edges. So 
you might just have to every so often just give it another another wipe but other than that it will just sit there and harden super super hard and uh, so just watch how you are with your gloves if you have to hold your board just kind of watch in case you get some splatters on this part the rubbing alcohol will just evaporate so that's totally fine and uh, for me this is looking pretty good so I'm just gonna leave it for now and um, quit playing with it because I tend to do that and uh, I will come back later all right guys good luck hi everyone I'm back with the next part of our um, tutorial now yesterday after I finished um, I had to kind of finish in a hurry uh, as the store was opening so I had forgot to go through um, how to remove the air bubbles um, any bubbles that are sitting in the resin um, so what you're gonna do is we're gonna pretend this is wet um, if you have some sort of lighter um, like one of these um, you can just go over it above the surface and it will help bring those bubbles um, to the surface and then they'll just evaporate so yeah just watch the coolness of the air conditioner um, it does like a temperature between 23 and 29 and I'm sure most of our houses are sitting in that range um, but anyways so as soon as you get this poured and you're done uh, go over it with um, a flame like this a heat gun will work so if you have a heat gun uh, very light air it go over top it'll help rise those bubbles to the surface um, and so forth okay so now this is you know we're gonna fast forward 12 hours because this is now the next day and this is dry um, to the touch but i still have my tape on the back so if you have no heat gun or anything like that and you tried to attempt to take your uh, tape off yesterday you wouldn't be able to turn it upside down like this without ruining it so you would have to kind of hold it very steady and try and pull the tape off um, you only will want to do that if this is not flowing over the edge at all anymore so I really like it just to leave it till the next day because I know that it's good and dry um, and I can flip it over now I can pull off this middle section and it will come off fairly easily now the parts here that the resin has run over and attached itself to will not come off as easily so we have a heat gun here at the store and I'm sure a blow dryer will kind of work the same but you're just going to heat up um, the tape and the resin really uh, a little bit And then you should be able to get in here and it will peel off now if I keep going where I didn't do it see this parts okay because there's no resin on it so the bottom part is fine because you shouldn't have had any resin here I'm gonna slide this over actually I'm gonna get rid of these now so the bottom part should just peel off no problem now Let's turn it this way so I'm going to show you what happens if I try and do this without using my heat gun now if I get here that one was fine it didn't go over the edge this one might be oh, we'll see it all depends on how it poured over the edge and whether or not it's gonna stick so if it definitely if it goes over and really seals and you try and pull the tape off and it just tears because the resin is so hard um, then you will need a heat gun um, but right now depending on how well this went over I'm doing okay so yeah that's fine for me but the heat gun possibly a hair dryer will work just as well now I was catching those drips and wiping them back for a good hour or so so that definitely helped okay yeah so I only really needed that heat gun once so I'm just gonna move that out of the way okay so now 
you're going to need your sandpaper again, so I'm just going to go grab mine. So the uh, wood on the back has a little bit of splintering around the edge just from the tape and pulling it up. So I'm just going to give the back another sand. Now I can see I do have a little bit of discoloration from the resin on the back and it's particular to do with these corners. They were That was where my resin wanted to pool the most. So, yeah, that's just what happens. So now I'm going to, I'm going to give the front a little sand. I noticed I had wiped it with a little bit of rubbing alcohol um, and it kind of faded that area just a little bit. So I'm just going to sand as close as I can to the pour here just to even that out. And by now you can wipe over this I got dust all over it and so okay so next now if you were to use this as a decorative piece like if you put something on here that doesn't have any moisture it would be fine but as soon as you put something like even some cups something that has some condensation or anything then this wood is going to swell so in your um, box you will find some wax and I'm going to go grab mine and we are going to show you how to apply that. So in your containers you will have a container with just a little bit of wax. Now you'll think oh that's not very much but we're going to focus on the front first um, and then we're going to go along to the back. So you're going to have um, we're going to try and put a blue shop towel in your kit and that will be for the wax application. So I've just gently dipped a little bit on my cloth here and I'm just going to gently wipe it on. And I might take a little bit of the same color. That's not a problem. Just kind of get a thin, even coat. Don't uh, over apply it. You're just, you'll notice that the grain of the wood will just look a little bit richer because of the wax. We're just gonna let that um, sit for a second. It's gonna take a little bit more. Okay, so make sure the front at least has a thin layer. And if you have a little bit, you can put some on the back. I don't know if in the camera you'll be able to see it a little. Oh yeah, you can. So there's the part with the wax and this is without. So you can see it just enriches that and brings out that natural beauty of that stained wood and I'm not putting a whole lot on like it really is a thin layer and I'm just kind of gently rubbing it in and then we're going to come back after and buff it now you'll be like oh she's dipping in for lots but I hardly have anything in my container because I had to use it all up for you guys so I'm just applying a very Thin amount now I'd rather you put the most amount in the front so once you get your front your back done and you have some left then you can come back into the front and make sure those group wood is um, nice and covered and then just flip your cloth around somewhere where there's not any wax and then what you're going to do is you're going to buff it. So if you feel it at first, it might have a little bit of a stickiness because of the wax and you don't want to cake it on. But once you buff it, it'll have a nice slippery feeling to it, like a polish. And now my hand just wants to slide all over it compared to what it was before you even started. So 
And then I'm gonna come back here and do the same thing. Now wax uh, takes 30 days to cure to really create a hard protective surface. So if you're using this with a hot drink, I would be careful because heat and wax um, are not necessarily friends. Um, if you have a cold uh, drink or something, you may want to just put a coaster underneath it. Um, you can definitely put, um, you know, decorative items. If you wanted to display stuff on there, you can now lean it up and use it as a decorative piece. You can, you know, put a little piece of sh uh, leather strapping or anything through the hole there. But other than that, you should be good to go. So I hope you enjoyed uh, doing that pour. And if you have any questions, please feel free to um, post on the on the group page. Um, sometimes Facebook doesn't give me those notifications so quickly. So if you're needing some information a little faster, then you know you can always email me or or send me a message on on. Um, my business page. All right, guys, I look forward to seeing your projects. If you've changed anything up, changed your colors, or did your own little thing, I, I really um, hope you enjoyed this one, and see you soon. Okay, bye.